Hello to all you ladies, gentlemen, and NB friends. Welcome to Commander Theorems. I'm the Commander Theorist, and I want to begin this by saying thank you to all of the wonderful members of the Magic the Gathering community for two great years working on this channel. You all rock. Now on to business, we're going to be discussing yet another Dominaria legend, one who I've been analyzing a lot since they're spoiling, Muldrotha the Gravetide. Muldrotha costs 6 mana, 3 of any color, then 1 each of black, green, and blue. They're a 6-6 elemental avatar, and during each of your turns you can play up to one permanent card of each permanent type from your graveyard. If a card happens to be multiple permanent types, you choose which one you will count it for as you play it. So in the case of something like Dryad Arbor, which is a land and a creature, you can choose it to count towards your land limit or your creature limit for the turn. So immediately, this card is very invocative of graveyard-centric commanders such as Carador and Marin, both of which were touted as the best options at the time for recursion. Muldrotha, I would easily put money on overtaking the two as the best graveyard-centric legend. Let's break down what this card does in terms of impact. Being able to play one card from your graveyard of each card type each turn essentially makes your graveyard an extension of your hand. This is a huge boon as many cards that cause cards to go to the graveyard such as fact or fiction will lose any downside they may have. This also gives added value to cards such as Spore Frog whose ability you get to recur many times over the course of the game. Evoke creatures, who can be cast for their evoke cost but are then sacrificed as they enter the battlefield, can become repeatable effects. And perhaps the best aspect of this ability is the subtle Crucible of Worlds ability, letting you bring back lands from the graveyard. So all of these aspects considered, we will want to build our deck specifically to utilize the cards in the graveyard additional times. The more usages we can get out of those cards, the more value we'll glean throughout the game. I would start off by saying that perhaps the most useful cards we can choose to include in this deck are cards like Secrets of the Dead. Being able to play cards from the graveyard is great, but being able to get additional value by drawing cards for each is even more gas. In fact, any card that gives you benefit from recurring cards from the graveyard is going to be the value we want. Deathrite Shaman, a veritable workhorse in this deck, gives you three options to use with cards and graveyards. They can be yours or your opponents. And given that our graveyard will be full of cards, we will have plenty of fodder for the Shaman. Deranged Assistant is incredibly powerful in this deck. It might mill you one to generate that one colorless mana, but it might as well say tap and create one mana and then draw a card. This is a prime example of a card that was vastly unnoticed before, but became much more powerful when a commander that can use its abilities was released. Glenelendra Archmage can easily keep opponents from ever casting their non-creature spells. You can bring it back with the Persist, and then use Muldrotha to return it again after that. Golgari Grave Troll can become immense given the sheer number of creatures that will likely see it to the grave, and having Dredge 6 means that if you don't have a lot of cards in your grave, the troll can give you 6 more. So, it can become a draw 6 spell. Jace's Archivist gives a Windfall ability, essentially giving you a brand new hands worth of card draw. And if you've noticed it by now, we're taking a look at these cards' abilities in a much different light, given that Muldrotha can use them even when they're in the graveyard. Kakusho is an all-star in reanimator decks, being able to gain 5 life from each opponent whenever it dies, so you sacrifice it, then return it, lather, rinse, and repeat. Marin of Clan Neltoth does make a cameo in my build due to her experience counter tricks being incredibly powerful. She might not be able to return to the command zone with our elemental friends sitting there, but she certainly can return from the graveyard. Protean Hulk, a card that I have not brewed with much since its unbanning, is perfect in a deck that can keep reusing its ability. If it dies, we can simply recast it, and then we get extra mileage out of it. Nothing super broken that we can go for, but it is a great value engine worth having. Ramankop Excavator is another instance of getting lands back from the graveyard. Reefworm is an interesting pick. It gives us a bigger token whenever it or one of its produced tokens dies, so we can then just start recasting it from the graveyard to get more and more of those bigger tokens. It's a neat ability to play with. 
River Kelpie is another card like Secrets of the Dead, if perhaps slightly better, as we get to draw a card whenever a card is put into play from a graveyard, or whenever a card is played from a graveyard. So essentially we will be drawing a ton of cards off of this while Modrotha is in play. Sadir Wayfinder, a card I once disliked due to the amount of loss you risk in those 4 cards not including a land, but in this deck, it draws you 4 cards for 2 mana. Sadisi Brute Tyrant is a powerful engine in this deck, milling you 3 whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, or in Muldrotha terms, it draws you 3. And should ever creatures enter the graveyard from your library, which they obviously will, you will get a 2-2 black zombie for each. Solemn Simulacrum becomes a repeatable engine of ramp and card draw, both incredible benefits. So as you can see, much of this deck revolves around getting value out of our creatures multiple times. We have very powerful effects like Sheoldred that will give us way more benefit than any of our opponents. But believe it or not, the artifacts in this build also bring us some value. Altar of Dementia is a very flexible card in this deck. We can use it to mill ourselves and air quotes draw cards, or we can use it to mill opponents and then recast that creature we sacked from the graveyard. I'm not the biggest proponent of mill and commander, but sometimes you need to make a statement. Ashnod's Altar again offers a sack outlet which ramps and then of course we can return the sacrificed creature later. Birthing Pod is our tutor of choice in this deck, letting us build into bigger threats while filling our graveyards with fresh meat to return. Expedition Map is incredibly fun in this deck. It can search for any land, any land, to put into your hand and then we can return it to play later to use it again. This can help us snag up a lot of choice lands to fix our mana. Nevenero's Disc is a repeatable board wipe, three words your opponents will never want to hear, and given our deck's resilience to wrath effects, this is potent. Smokestack is a card that I generally avoid, not being a fan of stacks decks in general, but you can easily build up a few soot counters to begin taking care of your opponent's board states while your board state as the pilot remains largely unfazed. Vidalkan Ori is here to let you cast things at instant speed. You can't use this to cast from your graveyard during your opponent's turns while Muldrotha's in play, but it will help you keep plenty of surprises at the ready in your hand. Now to round out our permanents, we have a nice little selection of enchantments that will bring a lot of frustration to opponents. The Dead Bridge Chant is a recurring reanimator enchantment that not only draws you 10 cards, air quotes, but every turn you have the chance to get a free creature card back onto the battlefield, or another non-creature card back to your hand. Grave Peril, Seal of Removal, and Pernicious Deed all act as repeatable removal spells on enchantments, being excellent to leave waiting for your opponents to walk into them. And lastly, perhaps the most fun usage of an already powerful card is the Mystic Remora. This card is a slight variation on Ristic Study, letting you draw cards whenever opponents cast non-creature spells, unless they pay 4 mana, but it also has a cumulative upkeep of 1 mana, so so normally this doesn't stick around for very long. But in this deck, we can opt out of paying that cost so it goes to the graveyard, at the option of just recasting it later and starting the process over. So now that we've talked about the majority of the spells in this deck, we have only the land base left to cover, and as with all of our videos on deck construction, I will link the full deck list in the description of this video for your convenience. Now, given that we are in green, blue, and black, we will want to get our usual suspects of shocklands in the deck. They're excellent mana fixing, and they're all legal targets for the multitude of fetches we run. Since we can return these lands to the battlefield for use later on, I chose to run extra fetch lands. So we have Footed Strand, Misty Rainforest, Polluted Delta, Verdant Catacombs, Windswept Heath, and the Wooded Foothills. These are the optimal fetch lands, of course if you don't have them for budgetary reasons you can always swap in Evolving Wilds, Terramorphic Expanse and the like. Now this breaks my usual rule of only sticking to on color fetching, but this is only because we can return them later with Muldrotha. Bajuka Bog is useful in clearing out opponents graveyards should they be running any recursion of their own, and since we have the ability to send their cards to the graveyard, we will want to remove their access to those graveyards. Ghost Quarter and Strip Mine both act as repeatable land destruction, also three words your opponents will not want to hear. 
Nefalia Drownyard lets you mill a player for 3, which can include yourself. So basically, when you target yourself, pay 3 mana, draw 3, it's on a land. I chose to run Reliquary Tower, but due to this deck not really minding if some cards end up going to the graveyard, it's not quite a necessity, but it is a card that I would recommend. Muldrotha is a powerful commander, and will likely see some extremely powerful lists bloom from competitive strategies. This list, I tried going for that route, albeit in a less cutthroat manner. I try to keep the decks I build fun and interactive without being too watered down that it can't win, most of the time. One of Muldrotha's greatest weaknesses that you will want to keep an eye on is its over-reliance on the graveyard. As with all graveyard-centric strategies, a well-timed bazooka bog could spell game over for us, eliminating the key cards that are sitting in the grave. All in all though, I feel Mildrotha is a great card to pick up for your commander collection and a good deck to build for your arsenal. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Commander Theorem. What Dominaria Legend would you like to see covered next week? Let us know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a thumbs up to let others know it's worth a watch. If you'd like to help contribute to the show, help us improve our production standards, and possibly set up something with gameplay footage in the near future, we have a Patreon running where you can help out. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, and remember to subscribe for more Commander Theorems such as this. And as always, on tap, upkeep draw, and I will see you rockstars at the next upkeep.